Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathsala. I am Professor D. Vail Murugan, former head of the department from Center of Advanced Studies in Xalography and Biophysics, University of Madras, Gindi Campus, Chennai. And I am at present working there as the University Grants Commission Basic Scientific Research Faculty. Today, we are going to talk on module Ab initio structure determination and laboratory source anomalous scattering methods from paper biocrystallography. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. First, I am going to introduce you to Ab initio structure determination. What do you mean by Ab initio? Starting from the scratch, without assuming anything, you are starting the experiment. Ab initio methods of solving macromolecules we use ACON program. I'm going to teach you in detail about this direct methods program, ACON, developed from England. Then I'm going to introduce you to the laboratory source anomalous scattering methods. What is the sanctity about this method? Usually, for pronounced anomalous scattering and for quick data collection, people have to go all the way to synchrotron sources in various countries and they have to spend time and they have to take their crystals all the way so that they can collect data at a wavelength where the anomalous scattering of the heavy atom is more pronounced. But we are going to show you how you can mimic the same thing with certain anomalous scatterers and use the lab source facility themselves and solve the macromolecular structures. We are going to consider the co-crystallization of hen egg white lysozyme, HEWL, with halides. And these experiments have already been done by Professor Doubter and Raja Shankar in U US. And I'm also going to tell you the importance of I3C as an anomalous scatterer in macromolecular crystallography. Direct methods have been highly successful in solving small molecule structures. They efficiently handle the phase problem. So when we talk about small molecular structures, we have the atomic resolution data. The only weakness in direct methods is that the probabilistic estimates of the phase relationships becomes poor in case of large molecules, which means that in proteins, where the total number of atoms in the molecule or unit cell goes to thousands, we cannot use the direct methods because the validity of the probability relationships in these cases is very poor, although they are 99% accurate in case of small molecules when n is very small. Direct methods assume well-resolved random distribution of atoms. Atomic resolution data is the main criteria in the successful working of direct methods as, in this case, the electron densities of the atoms do not overlap. This is seldom the case in macromolecules. Due to the technological improvements as on today, it is now possible to grow crystals of many macromolecules diffracting to atomic resolution. So eventually, direct methods can be applied to this data. So one example of this is the program ACON, and there is another program from the Academy of uh, Physics from Chinese Academy of Sciences, China. The program is OASIS. These programs use the small molecular direct methods for the application in macromolecules when you have atomic resolution data. In this situation, where you have atomic resolution data in macromolecules, direct methods, say, Sayers equation, can be very well applied. With some limited initial phasing from a substructure, ab initio structure determination using atomic resolution data is now possible for macromolecules also. Fodi et al. and Fodi himself, they propose through their research publications this technique, which has come out as a program ACON. ACON program is for ab initio, it's a method starting without assuming anything. So we can solve macromolecules using this program. To start with, a can program can be fed with a small or indeed a large fragment. 
When it's a fragment, it can be a helix, strand, or a portion of this, which will be used as a such model, and this is placed in a triclinic cell in P1 space group. The heavy atom substructure can also be used for seed phasing. The program uses the combination of approaches, mainly the dynamic density modification, DDM, to develop a refined set of phases. Correlation factor is used as a criterion of phasing quality. The general structure of Ekron can be explained now. The diffraction data is now divided into three groups, the strong, medium, and big data, according to the normally structure factor E values. Strong refraction means modulus of the E values should be greater than 1.2, which are used for phase refinement by the dynamic density modification and also for Patterson superposition procedure. Weak refraction means the modulus of E values should be less than 0.1, both strong and weak refractions are used in Sayer equation refinement, which is called SER. The medium reflections within the range 0.1 to 1.2 are used to calculate a correlation coefficient defined in 20.1, where sigma, the standard deviation, is defined in 20.2. For each potential solution of dynamic density modification, the correlation coefficient CC describes the extent to which the magnitudes of the calculated normalized structure factors, EC, resemble the observed ones EO. A fragment in a particular position and orientation in the unit cell will have an associated set of mod E and a CC. In phase refinement, EC and CC values are calculated from the modified map for medium reflections, which are not used for computing in the map to indicate solutions of dynamic density modification. Econ is already implemented in the CCP4 program suit as two parts, Econ MR for doing molecular replacement and Econ phase for doing phase refinement. Phases estimated after Econ MR are subjected to refinement in Econ phase. So let us describe Econ MR. Single random atom searching is used here to locate a single atom. For these thousands of positions of randomly generated atoms in the asymmetric unit are used. The values and corresponding correlation coefficients are calculated for all reflections for each random position. Econ shaves the thousand steps with the highest CC as starting points. Usually among the top 100 set, a solution will be found. If atomic resolution data is available for a protein, and if it contains at least one heavy atom, say sulfur or heavier, this can be used for further phasing. In this procedure, we use for the phospholipase here to the calcium atom to do the entire phasing. The input should be at least 5% of the total scattering composition. This shows the flowchart of Econ in CCP4. The left hand side shows the Econ MR molecular replacement part. The right hand side block shows the Econ phase. So as Aromark indicate, for doing the molecular replacement, in various ways input can come. It can come from larger motif or from MRA, then standard alpha helices can be used or small motifs can be used, whatever may be the thing. Once you have this molecular replacement done, then we go to the such a factor calculation, then we go to the initial phase solution. Once it is done, then it's self explanatory, we go to the Econ uh, phase module where side equation refinement uh, can be used in an iterative way until you get well defined set of phases. So we now talk about Econ phase. This part refines the starting set of phases using dynamic density modification using the CC for the medium E values to indicate a likely solution. The three phase refinement procedures in the suits are, as we mentioned already, DDM, the dynamic density modification, which will eliminate the negative intensities and truncate the highest density. The rest of the density is modified according to the standard deviation of the map at the cycle number, we will give the procedure for modification, the next slide. Then Patterson superposition generates a semi-sharpened Patterson sum function map from the starting fragment. Then Sayer equation refinement is carried out in real space using FFT instead of working directly with the phase relationship. Econ phase first uses DDM. If no solution is found, a few cycles of Side equation refinement may modify the phases sufficiently to allow the DDM to function more effectively. We have observed this in most of the trial cases done by us. This explains the dynamic density modification initially from the absorbed uh, phase uh, E values and uh, whatever uh, 
you have obtained phases, fast Fourier transformation is done, then electron density calculation is done. Now we are doing DM from rho, we are getting rho prime. I'll tell you later how to get it. This is called density modification. Now you do the inverse fast Fourier transform to obtain E calculation and phi calculator. Now again it goes into the box with E known input instead of the phi observed. Now you use this phi calculator with a weighting scheme. Again you do the iterative way by doing electron density, then density modification, and so on. Each cycle of DDM starts from a set of initial phases with weights, and a weighted E map is calculated with strong E's. The map is modified later and back transformed by fast Fourier transform to obtain a new set of structure factors. New set of phases and weights are calculated at the end of one cycle to be given to the next cycle. CC is calculated with the medium E's to check for solution. 20.3 gives you an explanation about the modification of densities. How from your rho, depending upon its value, rho prime can be obtained. DDM sets all negative intensities to zero. It modifies the positive intensity according to the ratio of rho over sigma. It truncates the modified density to a value k and rho of sigma, where rho over sigma is the map standard deviation. That nc is the cycle number for the first five cycles, and it is set automatically to five for subsequent cycles. K is a constant, normally set it to 3. During initial cycles, very low densities are reduced and strong densities are truncated at a given level. As the cutting level for high density is changed from cycle to cycle, this type of density modification is called DDM. The real space share equation refinement. This has been found that a couple of cycles of SCR can help DDM to reach a global minimum. When the CC of medium strength reflection no longer increases or the phases change only by little, little amounts after DDM, one or two cycles of SER can be employed. Application of shear equation refinement sometimes makes the correlation coefficient lower, but thereafter DDM can lead to a higher CC value than the previous one. In shear equation refinement, real space refinement is carried out using fast Fourier transform and inverse fast Fourier transform and no phase relationships are involved. There is no practical limit to the number of reflections to be included. There are many research publications dealing with the applications of Econ. So this program was originally released from uh, England by Professor Fodi's team. I, from my team, uh, Raja Kannan uh, et al. deal with the applications of this Econ program to 1.9 angstrom data of a macromolecule of molecular weight 39.5 kilo Dalton and also to a data of 1.4 angstrom resolution. And I have a publication in my team which discusses in depth the applications of Econ under the various situations when the input is of different types. This paper also deals with ab initio such a determination of the triple mutant k 53 m of bovine pancreatic PLA2 at atomic resolution using Econ. So here I want to acknowledge the help taken from Dr. Shaker in getting the crystal and also the data collected through Professor Doubter at the Singleton Laboratory, Upton, New York. There are eight research publications from my laboratory with my other scholar, Selva Nayakam, as a principal author dealing with the ab initio phasing method. So, one can refer to this publication given in the references if you want to know more. Let us now consider the laboratory source anomalous scattering methods. As seen earlier, multi wavelength anomalous diffraction experiments are possible where one has the access to tune the incident wavelength to the accuracy of the fourth decimals to observe significant variations in f prime and f double prime correction parts which are the correction to the real part and the imaginary part of the atomic scattering factor and these arise due to the anomalous scattering the tuning is readily possible with synchrotron sources to invoke such anomalous scattering measurements in laboratories with efficient X-ray sources and detectors, suitable heavy atoms have to be used for producing pronounced anomalous scattering effect. Sulfur and iodine can be used for this. The other means of enhancing the anomalous scattering effect of these atoms is to collect the anomalous scattering data with chromium K alpha radiation instead of the copper K alpha radiation as 
द इमेजनरी पार्ट करेक्शन जब डबल प्राइम विल बी नियरली डबल इन द केस ऑफ क्रोमियन केयर फॉर रेडिएशन देर आर डिवाइज इन विच द एब टाइप ऑफ डुअल बेवल डाटा कलेक्शन इज पॉसिबल फॉर दोज हु डू नॉट हैव एक्सेस टू सिंगोट्रॉन डाटा कलेक्शन एंड फॉर सम क्रिस्टल्स विच कैन नॉट बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड फॉर सिंगोट्रॉन डाटा कलेक्शन द लैब सोर्स और नॉर्मल स्कैटरिंग डाटा विल बी वेरी यूजफुल Sulfur single wavelength anomalous diffraction experiments have some limitations, such as long time exposure of crystals, highly redundant data, and high resolution, also, which are difficult for many crystals in the in-house experiments. Halide soaking experiments overcome these limitations. Incorporation of halide anions in protein crystals contribute. to good anomalous signals enough for phasing doubter stream has done extensive work on this and published the research papers the first report on this by doubter stream demonstrated the easy and rapid way of introducing anomalous scattering halide ion into protein crystals thereby providing a fast and simple route to solve the phase problem here there is important contribution by my indian friend uh, dr Uh, Raja Shankar, halide ion with crystallization medium occupies the ordered position around the protein. With enough anomalous scattering data collection with copper cathode ray radiation, iodine soaking is better because the imaginary part correction f double prime equals six point eight three as this wavelength. With soaking of protein crystal in halide salt solution, data collection is improved. The structure of a nucleus of assembly protein was determined by collecting three angstrom resolution data by soaking with ammonium iodide. With three-minute exposure time per frame at copper KR for radiation, exploring the low redundant data sufficiency for automated phasing. This has been done by again a former doctoral student Yogi Will, who is at present with Dr. Amit Sharma's lab in ICGB Delhi. The use of halide ion concentration and the soaking time vary for the different experiments carried out so far, and also differ on. Many factors such as the crystal stability, molecular weight, pH, cryoprotectants, etc. Vanilla and Weilmurgen report the simultaneous incorporation of positively and negatively charged ions into Hen egg white lysosome. We call it as HEWL protein crystal for SAD phasing. Again, they reported an inner SAD experiment with surface bound cerium ions. In the above two examples, data had been collected using inner Brucker microstar rotating anode generator. At the Department of Center of Advanced Reading Crystallography and Biophysics, and this instrument was operated at 45 kilovolt and 600 milliamp, equipped with MAR image detector 348 dTB. Soaking time of potassium iodide varied from 45 seconds to four minutes. With concentrations of 0.25 molar, 0.5 molar, and one molar, 45 seconds soaking was employed, and for the concentration of 0.5 molar, two minutes and four minutes soaking were carried out to understand. What will happen if the soaking time is increased, and what how it varies with respect to the various concentration? Anomalous signals were analyzed by Phoenix Dart XCH module in Phoenix. The heavy atom sites were located by Atosol using three angstrom cutoff. In the final development, R factors were in the range 18 to 25 percent for all the five data sets. The increase in solution concentration of potassium iodide in soaking led to higher anomalous signal at high resolution ranges. This was the conclusion arrived at. The data set with a crystal soaked for longer time showed higher anomalous signal even at high resolution range. The above experiments confirm the use of lab source anomalous scattering data in phasing and also in such a determination at 2.2 angstrom resolution. The increase in solution concentration of potassium iodide in soaking experiment leads to additional iodines on the protein surface and also enhances their occupancy. It doesn't affect the structure. The increase in soaking time results in non-linear variation in the occupancies of the bound iodine. These are the conclusions arrived at. All data sets had a minimum of three iodine sites with the occupancy 60 percent, resulting in good phasing with automatic experimental phasing with Atosol in Phoenix. We also carried out co-crystallization of Henyek oil lysosome with halides. Cadmium iodide co-crystallization is found to be much beneficial in lab source anomalous scattering data collection. The protein drop of the Henyek oil lysosome crystal contains one microliter of cadmium iodide of five millimolar concentration, or 
10 millimolar concentration of cadmium iodide solution and 1 microliter of protein solution. The buffer contains sodium chloride also. Data collection with in-house facility has been carried out by Ms. Scholar Vanilla. Heavy atoms were located by his in Phoenix. Autosol in Phoenix was used for such a solution. The imaginary component FW from cadmium equals 4.7 electrons at copper KR5 wavelength and that for iodine 6.9 electrons at this wavelength. Phase are located 23 heavy atom sites which include 7 chlorine atoms, 10 sulfur sites, 2 cadmium sites and 4 iodine sites. Dominant anomalous scattering effects were thus observed from cadmium and iodine atoms only. Refmac 5 in CCP4 was used for refinement. The final R value of the model was 17%. Anomalous map showed all the above heavy atoms. I will show you later. The use of cadmium iodide did not disturb the isomorphism. This is important of lysosome crystals and the concentration was also low. The presence of cadmium iodide in the crystallization solution promotes crystallization and also enhances the anomalous signal enabling one to obtain the substructure solution with the lab source anomalous scattering data collected with copper KR for radiation only. This shows the anomalous map at 4 sigma showing the 2 cadmium and 4 iodine ion which have been marked there as iodine 1, iodine 2, iodine 3, iodine 4 and also CD1 and CD2 in the right hand side figure. The densities are shown as colored ones. Our group has also reported the co crystallization experiments of hen egoid lysozyme with cerium chloride and F double prime for cerium for copper calcium is large 9.74 electrons. The experiment was carried out to see whether cerium chloride solution can be used in the protein drop to form crystals maintaining the isomorphism and also to judge whether enough cerium ions occupy ordered position so that these heavy atoms could be used for phasing. The crystal from the well with 25 millimolar concentration of cerium chloride was used for lab source data collection. This data was processed with atomer and anomalous signal was analyzed using Phoenix exchange in Phoenix by HKL2 map. Autosol in Phoenix was used for substructure solution. His located the two CCM peaks. Phaser was used to define the positions, occupancies and B factor of the CCM ions and finally resulted in 22 refined sites including sulfur and chlorine in which the height of the four peaks belong to cerium. Shellac G was also used independently to locate heavy atoms from the anomalous scattering data collected. In Phoenix, the phases calculated by phaser were further improved by density modification using reserve in auto build. Automatic model building was later carried out by AutoBuild in Phoenix and 115 residues with side chains were built. Heavy atom sites located from shell X D were fed to shell X E for phasing improvement and the polyala model was fed to ARP warp which automatically traced 126 residues with side chains built. The 2FO minus FC map from ARP was comparable to that of Phoenix map. The superposition of the model obtained with the deposit atomic resolution structure of hen egg white lysozyme showed an RMSD of only 0.18 angstrom. This can be easily seen from the figure 20.4. The experiments clearly prove that the high solubility of cerium chloride in water and binding of cerium ions on the surface of the enzyme is an added advantage for phasing using lab source anomalous scattering data. From the SAM laboratory, Co-Kistage experiment was carried out by my other scholar Vijay Kumar for Henny Egoic Lysozyme with europium chloride at 50 millimolar concentration. The anomalous scattering correction FW prime is 11.17 electrons at CUKL5 wavelength. This structure was solved by Phoenix U to final R factor of 17.3%. Two europium ions are bound to the surface of the crystal structure without affecting the crystal lattice. These binding sites are the same as that of the holmium and cerium binding sites reported by my other scholar Benilla. This figure clearly shows the europium and uh, sodium ions in the final defined structure in figure A and the anomaly different Fourier map of europium ion explains clearly the identification of europium and figure C shows how the europium ion is interacting with amino acids and water molecules. Another scholar of mine, Sibina Narayanan from this, our lab,
had carried out extensive work on lapsus anomalous scattering. He has used glucose isomerase and uh, thermolysin. And, uh, they were quickly soaked in uh, cerium chloride solution of concentration 300 uh, millimolar and 100 millimolar for 120 seconds and 90 seconds respectively. The crystal diffracted well in both the cases and lapsus data were collected in our lab only and bifurcated pairs were not merged. Anomalous signals were analyzed by phoenix.xh and anomalous scatterers were also found using the dual space recycling program enabled in shellx D. Phases from these heavy atoms were provided as input to shellx E for phase extension refinement and that fit to r for program web server for modeling and refmark 5 was used for refinement which is available in the CCP4 interface software. This shows the automatic model building and how it yielded interpretable maps. Solvent content in both the data sets were about 56 and 46 percent respectively. So good models have been coming out. So this is shown in figure 20 dot 6 which is self-explanatory. So this shows the anomaly different Fourier map and cartoon representation of thermolysin, cerium, calcium, zinc and sulfur ions at 5 sigma. Our work on all free of the glucose isomerase in thermalizins were 17.3, 21.6 and 18.2 and 20.3 respectively. Sibin Narayan and et al. had also carried out a report of the experiment with chromium chiral for radiation to enhance the anomalous scattering of atoms like sulfur, chlorine, manganese, sodium chloride and potassium chloride which are part of almost every protein buffer and chloride ions are present in almost all known proteins and have already been successfully utilized for sad phasing of many proteins. Exploiting the anomalous signal already present in the native protein or with the solvent would eliminate the extra experimental work of derivatization and would also eliminate the risk of lack of isomorphism. For the hen egoid lysozyme, glucose isomerase and thermalizin, lab source anomalous scattering data collection was carried out with chromium K alpha for enhancing the anomalous signal. This shows the crystallization and cryo protectant details for the three samples native hen egoid isozyme, native glucose isomerase and native thermalizing. So from the above table we have seen the crystallization conditions. As usual the heavy atom substructure was obtained from shell D which was subjected to shell E for phase extension and refinement. Then refinement uh, output phases were given to modeling program ARP warp and here refinement was carried out by refmac 5 and R factors are reasonably good. The above details convincingly prove the use of chromium K alpha radiation for data collection in exploiting the anomalous scattering effects of sulfur, chlorine and also the elements in the salts used in buffer preparation using which macromolecular structures could be phased in a better way. Shows the anomalous map and cartoon representation of uh, the hen egoidozyme, glucose isomerase and the thermolysin showing the appearances of the heavy atoms in these cases. As a, another attempt, as a last attempt, I3C was used as an anomalous scatterer and I3C is nothing but 5 amino 2,4,6 triiodoisothalic acid which combines heavy atoms for phasing 3 iodines are there with functional groups for the interaction with biological macromolecules and it is found to give rise to strong anomalous signals. In-house anomalous scattering data was obtained using this and these iodine atoms are arranged in equilateral triangle of 6.1 angstrom per side each. I will show you in the next projection. The native crystals of hen egoid isozyme, glucose isomerase and thermolysin were subjected to a data collection with the I3C incorporated. Soaking experiments have been used. Then lab source data collection was used at the chromium K alpha wavelength using Rivago R-axis 4 image plate detector at CCM by Hyderabad. I would like to acknowledge my friend Dr. Shankar Narayanan who allowed us to do these experiments in his laboratory. Slide shows the crystallization conditions and the soaking of this I3C in the case of uh, these three uh, macromolecules. And slide shows the phasing procedure done and also it shows the as figure A the I3C and the B, it shows anomalous scattering maps B, C, D for the uh, three proteins described showing the appearances of these heavy atoms. This shows the anomalous map of hen egoic lysosome with I3C 
and also glucose isomerase and thermolysin at 5 sigma. So this is again important slide where calcium and sulfur were used for uh, uh, seed phasing. The left hand side figure appeared in the uh, American Crystallography Association newsletter as uh, ab initio phasing with just acorn we located one calcium atom position in the uh, phosphorylipase A2 and this was used for phasing the entire structure. Of course, synchrotron radiation was used. I want to acknowledge Professor Doubter, who was kind enough to collect very good data for this. And I want to acknowledge uh, my friend Dr. Shaker for providing the samples. So, students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. At copper K alpha wavelength, the imaginary part correction for iodine, namely F double prime for iodine equals 6.9 electrons and for the same iodine atom when you change the wavelength to chromium k alpha radiation the f double prime of iodine goes to 12.82 electrons which means nearly it is getting doubled actually what happens is whenever the incident radiation is far removed from the absorption edge of an atom in the molecule the atomic scattering factor of that atom becomes real. So the atomic scattering factor, if you call it as Fj, you call it as a real quantity F0. But for the same atom, if the incident frequency is coming near to the absorption edge, what do you mean absorption edge? Every atom has its own natural frequency of vibration. So other frequency in terms of wavelength also you can write the relation. So whenever this incident wavelength is closer to the absorption edge of that heavy atom, let us say in this case iodine, what happens is the atomic scattering factor of iodine, which was real, now it has become a complex value. So whenever you have a complex value, it has a real part and imaginary part. So in this case, whatever the original value, normal part it was having F0, we are going to add two correction factor, one F prime, which is going to be added in the real part, another F double prime which is going to be added in the imaginary part. So thus your wavelength when it is close to the absorption edge, your atomic scattering factor for any atom becomes F naught plus F prime plus I F double prime. It may be any species. Now but yeah, whatever the species in general the F prime correction is always negative which means that the total real part is coming down when you go to the absorption edge. But if you look at the imaginary part correction, F double prime, it is pronounced. When you go to the absorption edge, the F double prime part is pronounced. That is what is being shown here. At copper K alpha radiation, we have only 6.9 electrons for the F double prime. Whereas at chromium K alpha wavelength, which is closer to the iodine absorption edge, it is becoming nearly double. What is the advantage of this? When you have pronounced anomalous scattering, you can find hundreds of Bragg reflections for which in the intensity of H reflection will differ much from intensity of the inverse reflection namely H bar. This difference in intensities called Biford difference can be made use of for the phase calculation. So that is the use of doing this experiment for which we have two types of experiment, one doing with single anomalous diffraction at a particular wavelength called peak wavelength where F double prime is the largest and the another is doing the data collection at three wavelengths where one is at the peak wavelength where F double prime is the largest value and other is at the inflection point where the F prime is most negative and one of the left remote or right remote wavelength can be used for other purpose. The experiments prove that without addition of heavy atoms the data collection at chromium K alpha wavelength will enhance the anomalous scattering of native sulfur present in the protein or that of the atoms present in the buffer. What do you mean by that? Suppose with the 20 amino acids, we have sulfur present automatically. So that sulfur anomalous scattering can be enhanced by collecting data on another wavelength. So now we have data collection facilities having dual wavelength data collection. The simplification is that one has to, uh, one can avoid all the way carrying your uh, crystals to the foreign countries for the purpose of doing data collection with synchrotron. Now, 
If you consider this compound I3C, we have three iodine atoms, like a cluster, no, you can just, it will take, bind in different places on the surfaces, giving its own use in the macromolecular phasing. The three iodine atoms in I3C will give a strong anomalous signal. The halides I3C can be used either during soaking or co-crystallization by mixing it in the buffer. So either we can use halides for this or also use I3C as the soaking experiments. And anomalous scattering data can be collected with the lab source either with copper K-alpha or chromium K-alpha wavelengths. Thank you.